Welcome back, mitochondriacs, for another episode of Cancer as a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. I am happy to be back with you today to discuss the next substance when it comes to glutamine, and that is EGCG. And this is an exciting topic because this is the probably the glutamine inhibitor that most people are aware of, although, of course, we're going to cover several others in addition to what we've already covered so far with curcumin, berberine, and psilocybin. But most of the natural glutamine inhibitors work on various uptake ports and channels. Therefore, it can't be brought into the cell. But EGCG is one of the only that work specifically on glutamine enzymes for its utilization with inside the cell and the TCA cycle. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I want to start with this paper to not only talk about EGCG from a 20,000 foot view, but to also discuss just in general what EGCG is for those who are not aware of what it is. And this paper is titled Targeting Cancer Hallmarks with Epigallocatechin Gallate EGCG Mechanistic Basis and Therapeutic Targets. And what it says here is that EGCG is a catechin, which is a type of flavonoid found in high concentrations in green tea. EGCG has been studied extensively for its potential health benefits, particularly in cancer. EGCG has been found to exhibit anti-proliferative, anti-angiogenic, and pro-apoptotic effects in numerous cancer cell lines and animal models. EGCG has demonstrated the ability to interrupt various signaling pathways associated with cellular proliferation and division for different cancer types. EGCG anti-cancer activity is mediated by interfering with various cancer hallmarks. This article summarizes and highlights the effect of EGCG on cancer hallmarks and focuses on the impact of EGCG on these cancer-related hallmarks. The studies discussed in this review enrich the understanding of EGCG potential as a therapeutic tool against cancer, offering a substantial foundation for scientists and medical experts to advance scientific and clinical investigations regarding possibility as a potential anti-cancer treatment. So let's look at the potential hallmarks that are affected by EGCG. Starting from the top left here, it shows that it assists with the genomic instability, the resistance of cancer cell death, or the anti-apoptosis mechanisms found in cancer. It helps with tumor genesis and carcinogenic activity, sustained proliferative signaling, evasion of growth suppressors, enabling replicative immortality, deregulating cell metabolism, tumor promoting inflammation, induction of angiogenesis, tissue invasion and metastases, and immune evasion. So EGCG, as you can see here, given its multiple mechanisms, is one of the most powerful tools we have in our tool bag against this disease. And I particularly want to show some of the mechanisms in which EGCG has shown an effect. So for example, in the adherence migration and extracellular matrix remodeling, it's shown to have activity against TGF beta and multiple signaling pathways to do with adherence, migration, and proliferation. It's also been shown to affect the VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor pathway, at multiple levels to mitigate endothelial angiogenesis or the creation of new blood vessels. Of note, you can see here that EGCG works upon HIF1-alpha, mTOR, this PI3K, ATK pathway, which involves NF-kappa B, which is a pro-inflammatory signal. It also works upon PSTAT and other parts of the inflammatory cascade. Here's its role within the activation, proliferation, and migration as well when it comes to toll-like receptors, inflammation at various levels. It's also responsible for blocking this SMAD, which has to do with the de novo synthesis of glutathione. And again, involved with pathways regarding inflammatory cytokines and chemokines, which are chemical mediators involved in the inflammatory process. Pretty cool. So in this paper from January, 2024 in Frontiers of Immunology, it's titled The Role of EGCG in the Tumor Microenvironment, Metabolic Reprogramming, and Immunotherapy. And it says, additionally, EGCG can suppress multiple metabolic reprogramming pathways, including glucose uptake, aerobic glycolysis, AKA the Warburg effect, glutamine metabolism, fatty acid metabolism, and nucleotide synthesis. So as we can see, it doesn't just have diverse actions on multiple signaling and inflammatory pathways, 
but it also has to do with the nuts and bolts of metabolic pathways, including glucose, glutamine, fatty acids, and nucleotide synthesis, which are all part of the metabolic approach to cancer. So we're going to talk a lot more about EGCG in the future when we get to an entire micro series regarding glucose uptake and metabolism. But needless to say, EGCG does affect on multiple levels, glucose metabolism. And in particular, in this picture, it's showing the blockade of this PFK enzyme, which stands for phosphofructokinase, which is responsible for converting fructose 6-phosphate to fructose biphosphate, which is a key step in glycolysis. And that's going to downstream have an effect on the amount of available pyruvate, which can get later converted to lactate. And it's going to ultimately help us with the process of apoptosis through caspase mechanisms. This is beyond a busy slide, but the bottom line is that I don't know if there is a better molecule in our fight against cancer because EGCG, as you can see here, is having diverse effects. I'm going to start from the top left here. It's going to help in blocking glucose uptake. It's going to help in blocking glucose utilization at multiple levels, lactate dehydrogenase enzymes. It's also going to block the use of glucose 6-phosphate from getting put into the PPP or the pentose phosphate pathway by blocking G6PD. It's going to block several areas of the folate pathways that are responsible for improving the nucleotide synthesis so that DNA and RNA can be replicated. You're going to see EGCG act upon this FASN enzyme, which is responsible for the creation of new fatty acids. We've already talked about several of these growth pathways like PI3K, AKT, but also HIF1-alpha, mTOR, ERK1 and 2, which relate to CMIC. If you remember right from the last video, CMIC, at least partially responsible for the increased uptake in glutamine utilization. It also has positive effects on the AMP kinase pathway. As we go down further, if you remember right from the Don talks, this is where Don works, this GLS enzyme or glutaminase enzyme where EGCG works on the glutamine side of things is right here where it's blocking this glutamate dehydrogenase enzyme so that glutamate can't get utilized in the TCA cycle to further make fatty acids. And it also blocks this enzyme here where alpha ketoglutarate is being converted to this 2-DHG chemical, which is responsible for some important epigenetic modifications within cancer cells. So as you can see, EGCG is a rock star when added to the foundations of metabolic therapy. I just wanted to give a couple additional pictures here where EGCG actually works. So if you remember right, glutamate is being converted into alpha-ketoglutarate through these glutamate dehydrogenase enzymes, and this is where EGCG works. And again, here's another picture showing that EGCG is blocking this glutamate dehydrogenase 1 enzyme. And again, here, EGCG is blocking glutamate dehydrogenase enzymes. And remember, Don worked here. Some of the other things like Berberine and silabenin work on this particular SLC1A5, but EGCG is working on the inner workings of glutamate to alpha-ketoglutarate, and that's going to essentially shut down the lipid synthesis and nucleotide synthesis. It's also going to, as we talked about in the, the prior slide, it's going to block enzymes responsible for converting citrate into lipids, the FASN enzyme. It's just almost too remarkable to believe how amazing EGCG is. Now, the question that you all might have is how does EGCG compare to Dawn? And in a lot of the cases of molecules that are under investigation for their inhibition of glutamine-related enzymes and uptake channels, we don't have a lot of head-to-head -head data, but EGCG is one of the ones that we actually do, okay? So, we obviously have some baseline amount of utilization by cancer cells or glutamine oxidation, right? And what we see is when EGCG is added, we see a dose response curve that is pretty impressive. It's a near 50% response when EGCG is added. And we can see that there is actually remarkable responses even at 10 micromoles. And it really kind of levels off at about 30 to 40 micromoles. And then it kind of completely levels off at about 40 to 50. And you may ask, well, how does that compare to Don? Well, Don was compared here and we had the same starting point about 40. And we see that with Don, we have a lower amount of glutamine utilized 
but not a huge amount difference. We're at 20 picomoles per hour. And here, even at maximum concentrations with Dawn, it gets down to about 10 picomoles per hour. So that's pretty cool. And then when they actually graphed it here in the same units, picomoles per hour, we see that Don has a very slight edge on EGCG. So I think this really highlights that this is a really powerful tool that we have in our tool bag. And this is something that is available to almost everybody, either through green tea or through the actual supplementation of EGCG. And I think that's pretty amazing. So I really hope that I'm making the case today that EGCG is a very powerful intervention that we have in our tool bag. And it's cheap, it's safe, and it can be employed for most people. Now, never add any intervention without discussing it with your doctor or like-minded healthcare practitioner, but it's fairly safe to say that this can be utilized by most people. The dosing, the scheduling, the timing, all of that stuff, again, will have to be between you and your doctor, but EGCG is something that I think that most people can benefit from. If you like videos like this, please like it. If you have someone in your life who is struggling and could benefit from this information, please share it with them. And if you're not a subscriber yet to our mitochondriac army, please subscribe and come along on our journey to learn everything there is to know about mitochondria and mitochondrial metabolic therapy. And until next time.